we will go over there for now. Space and rocket review. And then let's go check up on that spin prime test, huh? It's Starship. That'll that'll tie us over until uh Yeah, I would I would say there we go. one different big difference here from our competitors. Because yes. uh Booster Nine so far has performed of course the cryogenic boot test in December, then another cryogenic boot test in December, then another cryogenic boot test in July, <laughs> and spin prime, aesthetic higher, and now probably spin prime. If you look at Booster Seven, that story is a bit different. Because that's cryo, 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 spin prime, spin prime, spin prime, static fire, static fire, spin prime, spin prime, static fire. <laughs> How many spin primes, primes do you want? Amount of test. And yes, I did just did this to make it clear how many tests Booster 7 had. Yes, yes it was five times fast. There's that theme of the of the video of like uh, it's another spin prime. That was actually precisely <laughs> coming from because Booster 7 like making a spin prime after spin prime after spin prime. Boy. <laughs> Yep. I guess those engines were thoroughly tested. <laughs> yeah, well, look, and, look, look how and that replaced. went. Yeah. Yeah. And look how went. Also, the replacements on Booster 7 were... No, this is, li this is live right now, Nils. Of course, you had the whole downcomer situation, I would call it. Oh. Um, <laughs> we, um, we had the situation with... Mo basically, it was kind of normal after a test to see, like, at least one or two engines to be replaced. That was just a common sign. We had the uh, hydraulic units, which got worked on basically every few weeks. Um, yeah. It, it, it was a very funky booster, to work it, word it like that. <laughs> also, I see that uh, in the back channel there's now a... Uh, uh, the remix demanded of my of my booster <laughs> nine uh, seven test campaign. Yeah, we need worry, a we'll, we'll, get, that. we'll get Patrick on that right away. Uh, <laughs> anyway, moving right along. That wasn't me, I swear. Support that's come in actually over the past few minutes. So, Coco Cats has that, five red team members. That wasn't <laughs> Charles has given. The, the, that wasn't me, I swear. It, it was it was me. <laughs> spin prime, spin prime, spin prime, spin prime, static fire, spin prime, spin prime, spin prime, bow wow bow. Bow, Sorry, my bad. Spin, spin prime test. Spin, 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 spin prime. Bow, mount, bow. So guys, we're waiting on this until we get Electron. Electron should be launching soon. How long until the Electron launch? Shut the keep you in there. So, uh, about 35 minutes. SpaceX is out there with Booster 9, which was put on the OLM the other day, and they're doing a spin prime test. Spin prime, spin prime test. Down, down, down. That tune is straight fire. Dude, it is straight fire. I, this is like my favorite song from Summer Car. It's such a good song. Why does it why does it vibe so hard? That's terrible. Uh, you're back from changing out a few backup bulbs on the F three fifty, right on. Satakipine. You know what this reminds me of Cruising World? It does. I know the exact track you're talking about. 
I know. No, there's a track in. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hold on, hold on. What's that la? This one. From the same time period. Oh wow, Satisfactory is playable again. We're gonna play some Satisfactory for After Hours. We got the Update 8 stuff coming. Missed a per the perfect opportunity to Rickroll you. I don't do that. I We only Sata Kipine roll you. I just arrived. Can I get a resume of the event? Shallon, they're supposedly going to do a spin prime test. Spin, spin prime test is basically where they do, they turn on the rocket engines, except with no, igni no ignition. So they start, all the pumps on the rocket engines turn on and it spews out a bunch of atomized propellant out the bottom. And that's it. I'm kind of putting us here in a holding pattern until the electron launch. So coverage should start on the electron launch relatively soon here. Gas mindset, Caspala. Copy URL, paste URL. Uh, so in about three minutes, we'll get Rocket Lab cast turning on here, and we will switch to "We Love the Night Life, Baby." Bow, bow, bow. I think so, Hellfish. Yeah. Sata kipine. Bow, wow, 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 wow. Oh, what do we got here? The, the sort of the original one, and they made it into a purple for the for the staging ring. We've seen it down at Massey's. I know we don't need one, but if we did, I have a thought. I've had a thought bubbling in my head for West Coast Polar Launch Site. Would this make sense? It's own forward dome and everything. It it basically got a new. We've That's near that Astoria, huh? Uh, uh, as well with, like, yeah, I don't see why not. Uh, that would work. Skip one. Like, one of the parts is instead of like for its own ship, it's maybe for, for a future ship, and it just gets. I still want. Graphics are really good in this game. This ain't no game. Space flight is serious business. You know what I'm saying? Know what I'm saying? Saying? I'm gonna go get the papers, get the papers. So, like, like you were saying, up by Astoria. Right here would be good. My only, my only thing, actually, that's even further north than Astoria, huh? Or is it? No, it is. Yeah. Am I stupid? Yeah, it is near Astoria. Yeah, it is at Astoria. It's yeah, it's where the Goonies. It's the Goonies. My only condition here is that every time it launched, someone would have to scream, Hey, you guys! Dun, da, da, ba, da, 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 Sloth, how'd he get out? Truck. First, you got to do the truffle shuffle. Oh, come on! Do it! Come on! Do it! Yeah, that would work. Yeah, I saw the dude working on the roof right there. And yeah, there is a. That was definitely a military base. I think big ramp like that. Cool. Is there damage from the first launch? Uh, yeah. Some of it is superfluous. Gas mines there. So yeah, over here would be it'd be good, but you have to scream A hey, you guys. Or Johnny Five is alive. Something like that. 
I still would love a launch site over here on Cape Cod. I swear, it's not because it's near my house. It's, it's near my house. The National Seashore over here. It's already a wildlife refuge, and that would basically guarantee that no one would ever build anything out here on the National Seashore, right? Right here would be perfect. Good, good. Actually, that's a good intermediate. It's a good intermediate launch site being 41 degrees inclined. You could go polar out of here if you really wanted to. Or you could shoot geo, go down here and take a left. Super synchronous insertion. I mean, it's not that much worse than wallops right there. I'm going to the Melbourne, Florida area for the holidays. Where is the best place to watch a launch? Um, look up. L look up. And no, you ain't putting a launch site on Turn Island. Uh, d hey, with enough money, we can make it happen, Al Desert, okay? With enough money, with enough money, we could make it happen. All right? With enough money. Imagine the tourism. Imagine the tourism it would bring. And don't give me the, oh, well, the people in the Cape wouldn't allow. Yeah, you guys deal with this every summer, okay? All right? I'm learning because Route 3 is a nightmare, basically, from June to August. And avoid it should be avoided at all costs. Right here, man. Right there. It's perfect. It's perfect. Look. 2.5 mile radius. Closest would be 1.9. That's perfect. It's good enough. The spot you're looking at is Nasset. There's no tourism there and it's off limits. Off limits, why? The piping plovers. Ugh. Fine piping plovers just crap on my dreams, why don't you? The name Cape Kennedy would probably stick there. Yeah. Yeah, well, a rocket launch complex would be minimally invasive. Minimally invasive, yes. It would be fine. Minimally invasive. It would be great. I mean, I don't, that's the only spot I could, I could find. And yes, I do look that's miles, uh, enough miles away from most things anywhere out, anywhere else out here. Well, Fleet Truro, you're, you're too close to people's houses. Um, Discovery, go at throttle up. There is the old, there's an old military base up here somewhere with a, with an old tracking station forget exactly where it is. It's up here somewhere. Yeah, there it is. This could make a make for a good launch site, but it's too close. It's too close to houses and stuff. There's too many houses. Just buy the houses, five head. Yeah, work for SpaceX. Actually, where that guy's house, where that house is right there would be perfect. But there is other stuff. There's people have other houses out here. Just do a little eminent domain. Yeah. Yeah, the the old... There's an old tracking station up here. They still have the antenna. So, you got the tracking station already. Just freaking launch pad right there, man. Right there. That'd be great. But, you're too close. Too close to people. That's too close for... Houses and stuff. Looks like there's a campground right there. We need a two-mile radius. At the very minimum, and uh, and the peninsula is two miles wide. 
Yep, that's not happening. That particular house is a continuing issue. Oy. Monami? Let me see. That's, yeah, that's down here. That would work, but you'd need to build the infrastructure out here. How would we get stuff to this? We'd need to build a bridge out here. Rocket Lab is go. All right, cool. We'd need to build a bridge out there. Okay. There's some perfect land right there that someone put a useless golf course on. Cape Cod has no infrastructure anywhere. It's all the same. Yeah, I know. My only other thought would be launching out of Otis. But something tells me that people that live in, like, Hyannisport probably wouldn't like that. There's a gigantic military base on Cape Cod. It's all up in here, but... There is actually a Space Force tracking antenna, too. See? That's Space Force Delta-6, I think. Now it's getting closer to my house. Yeah. Yeah, you'd need... This road would need to be built up. They'd never do it. They'd never allow that. Oh, Bill, that's a huge, ant yeah, no, it's a huge phased array antenna. Gigantic. It was used during the Cold War for incoming missile detection. Now Space Force, Space Force Delta-6 uses it for space-based controls, I think. And then there's the bridge that's falling down right next to it. We don't need to maintain it. It's fine. Never mind. Next to salt water. Nah, it's good. Oh, that's bigger than Aegis, Hellfish. If only we had Star Raker. No need to worry about launch sites if you're launching horizontal takeoff. That's where I used to grow Quahogs. No, you can't use Stage Harbor. Damn it. Damn it! Seriously, though, Chatham would be prime. That would be great for a launch site. But, yeah. I would say try Nantucket, but, yeah, we both know that that's... We both know that that's not happening. Yeah, we, we all know that that's not happening. You could launch out of P-Town on the National Seashore, but too many people. Nantucket's even better. I don't think there's any spot for a launch site here. There's just too many houses. It's too overdeveloped. Ideally, ideally, the best spot would probably be like right there. But, uh, yeah, there's this whole... Size concept right there. That's probably not. Uh, they they would probably not be happy about that. How about Upper Massachusetts? Any good spot for a launch site? Uh, Gloucester maybe. But no. Rockport. There's too many people. It's just Sconset, Yeah. Kentucky was the setting for your favorite TV show. Wings? Wings? I love wings. <laughs> Maybe up here? Any houses up there? Hey, okay, okay. We might be on to something. Try Tucker Nuck, okay. What'd you call me? Mm, yeah, that's good. There's not many people out there, but the only problem is we need to go east. Unless we'd like launch out here and go that way. Did you say Gloucester? Yeah, Gloucester. 
Gloucester. Is that what you want me to say? Discovery. No what about problem. Plum? Plum. Yeah. Maybe. Problem is Gloucester's in the way. You mean Gloucester? No. I don't. <laughs> What's this down here? Ah, yes. No man's land. Yeah, maybe. The problem is you'd need a heavy dock out here to get any heavy equipment. Rocket Lab is online. Alright, cool. Age of Smart, 32 months. What about Martha's Vineyard? Not many people to kick off. Just make it a national security imperative. Aqualux, the problem with Martha's Vineyard is that there's a lot of people with FU money that live on that island. Um, also, not, not heavy enough infrastructure. No heavy port. No heavy ports on Martha's, Martha's Vineyard. Martha's Vineyard. I hope. Yeah. No heavy ports on Martha's Vineyard. God. Damn it. Martha's Vineyard. Martha's Vineyard guy. Okay, here. Let's change up the title. Today's mission, we love the nightlife for Capella Space. Hello and welcome to the live broadcast of our 40th Electron launch, scheduled for liftoff nice. at 11.45 a.m. local time or 11.45 UTC. The sun is trying to shine, it's doing its best over Pad B at Rocket Lab Launch Complex 1 in Mahia, our orbital launch site in New Zealand, and we are counting down to today's launch in just 18 minutes from now. My name is Muriel Baker. And I'm Likita Satursala. And we're back in mission control for today's dedicated launch for Capella Space, after having stood down from the first attempt a couple of weeks ago due to an engine sensor reading. In the final moments before launch, one of the Rutherford engine sensors picked up on low igniter pressure, which meant the rocket flagged it as no-go for launch, and there was an auto automatic safe abort. Now we're back on the pad and ready for next attempt. And not only have we returned to the pad, but we are back with an exciting new twist. Congratulations to those of you paying attention Thanks. to the rocket in our opening shot and who have figured it out already, because we all know by now that for Rocket Lab, red means recovery. And so with a new red booster on the pad, today's launch is also a recovery mission, or a splash and grab, as we'll probably call one of our future recovery launches. So why the switch to recovery? Well, Come on, Electron's Synergy. rolling Jesus. off our factory floor every three weeks or so now, and we had a recovery booster fresh answer. off the production line and ready to go in the days before our first launch attempt. The call was made to bring forward that recovery booster and swap the payload onto this Electron to tighten the turnaround to get back to the pad for Capella and accelerate our efforts to make Electron a reusable rocket at the exact same time. There's even more exciting recovery news to this launch, because today, for the first time in Electron's history, we are launching with the Rutherford engine that we've already flown before. This recycled 3D printed engine was part of the power pack that flew the it's there red. and back again recovery mission we launched in May last year. After bringing this stage and its engines back from the ocean, we refurbished one of those engines for a full requalification campaign. That meant taking it through all of the same acceptance tests we performed for our brand new engines, including multiple full mission duration hot fires. The results were impressive, with the engine hitting all of its marks and performing at the same level as the newly built ones. So it was given the green light by our propulsion team for reflight. We will be attempting to bring back this engine again, along with the first stage, once it makes its way back to Earth from space underneath a parachute today. Our marine recovery team are in place and you can see the feed from the boat right there on your screen and they are waiting for the call to move in for collection That's once it boat. splashes down. This recovery mission will be our eighth booster recovery attempt 
and one of the team's final tests before we attempt to refly not just one engine, but an, an entire previously flown stage one on a mission in the coming months. So today is a hugely exciting mission and a big step towards reusable electron rockets. Hellfish, in 2004-2005, would you have ever thought there would have been multiple reusable booster systems in less than 20 years? No. No, 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 no. I, uh... I had basically consigned reusable rockets to history at that point because I would have been reading about Constellation. I'm like, yeah, let's go back to capsules. Capsules is fine. Then we could, you know, we could go explore the moon. And maybe we'll get, because the shuttle, der Ares is shuttle, der Ares is shuttle derived, so we'll, you know, we'll get the boosters back and stuff. It's fine. But the in 2005, propulsively landing a rocket was something that Buck Rogers did on his TV show. Or Tintin Rocket, yeah. I mean, there was DCX, right, and Venture Star, but Venture Star had just been canceled. I remember reading about, I remember reading about Venture Star in Popular Science in like 2001, 2002. Yeah, Constellation was a good idea too, wasn't it? Yep. Yep. They have not pursued catching it with a helicopter lately battle. I think, just like SpaceX with their fairings, they're working on basically making the components uh, less susceptible to saltwater inundation. <sighs> oh, synthetic aperture radar. Very nice means people are going to be able to get their imagery as yeah well. fellas i mean i haven't i haven't gone on a hard constellation rant in a <laughs> help me i'm stuck <laughs> i haven't gone on they showed the damn cruise ship stuck in the canal <laughs> i don't know why that's so funny it's still funny dude actually two crew two ships collided in the suez canal the other day yeah Ever stuck. Yep. Yeah, I did. Uh, I still think Constellation is a good idea. And I think that the problems that the program was facing from an engineering standpoint were just... The reasons why they became so widely known is because uh, that's when the program was canceled. If they'd canceled Falcon 9 after the Jason 3 landing, people would still be saying today that you can't propulsively land a rocket reliably. Turns out... When you're still trying to figure out the design and do all the testing and do all the analytical work, problems arise. It literally happens with every single program. I still think the Constellation architecture is fantastic. Ares 1 and Ares 5 are great vehicles, and you could make that you could make a pretty damn good uh, lunar exploration program with those two. SLS is Constellation light. Avionics. Avionics is go. GNC. GNC is go. Beacon. Beacon is go. T1. T1 is go. GC. GC is go. PLS. PLS is go. RSO. RSO is go. MET. MET is go. RF. RF is go. It's because everybody knows how MM. difficult it is, Olivier. MM is go. Recovery. Recovery is go. We would have MTV tests going on right now if Constellation wasn't canceled. That concludes the go no go sequence. We are T minus 11 minutes, 20 seconds and counting. We are okay. go for terminal count at T minus 10 minutes. From this time, the three word hold procedure is in effect. And with that, mission control confirms that we'll be proceeding with the rest of today's countdown and moving forward to liftoff in around 11 minutes. As we count down to liftoff, let's take a closer look at our Electron rocket. Electron is a three-stage launch vehicle capable of lifting 320 kilograms or 705 pounds to low Earth orbit. It's made from carbon composite and stands 18 meters or 59 feet tall. And when it is fully fueled, weighs in at around 13,000 kilograms or 28 and a half thousand pounds. The hardest work for Electron is in the first few minutes of launch, 
when the nine engines at the bottom of stage one that you can see there takes us through the dense atmosphere of Earth with 224 kilo newtons of thrust. Those engines are the Rutherford, our world first 3D printed electric pump fed engines. At around 70 kilometers altitude, roughly two and a half minutes Strong into back flight, is we jettison the first stage and the vacuum optimized Rutherford engine on the second stage will light up and take us the rest of the way to orbit. Now, once we get to orbit, around nine minutes into flight, our second stage separates from our third stage, which we call the kick stage. The kick stage takes the payload from an initial electrical orbit to a circular orbit ahead of deployment using a small but highly capable 3D printed engine called Curie. We're just 10 minutes away now from our 40th liftoff. It feels like just yesterday Electron lifted off the pad for the very first Electron's time. Electron's launched 40 times. A lot times. has changed since then, with the commissioning of our second pad yeah, here sure at LC-1, dedicated pad on the eastern shore of the US with LC-2, missions to the moon, bigger rockets, the list goes on. So as we look to the sky for the 40th time, let's take a look back at the last 39. Wow. 40 times for Electron. I can't Electron. believe we're at Flight 40. It's pretty Honestly, damn respectable. Like flight 1 was just a few weeks ago. And uh, I just want to take this moment to congratulate the whole team for getting us to this point, and also all of our customers who have entrusted us to fly their precious payloads. We've done some amazing missions um, from little CubeSats to all the way to the moon. And it's, uh, it's, just, it's a great privilege uh, to be here today. So um, as we fly out here 40, uh, can't wait for 80 and, and beyond. You know what the thing is, dudes? 40 launches would be ridiculous if SpaceX didn't exist. This is amazing in its own regard. What Electron does is pretty pretty nuts. 40 launches is no joke. Their first launch was what, 2018? 40 launches over five years is pretty damn good. That's really good. It's kind of overshadowed by Falcon 9, I, I think, but Electron is a very, very, very capable vehicle for what it is. <laughs> Sorry, Jim. <laughs> I could have probably translated it. I speak nerd. It's all right. It's going to take so long for a company to get near SpaceX. Indeed. Compared to historical systems, how big is Electron? Uh, Along with our 40th Brent launch Stone. today, this year has been an incredibly busy one for Electron and our team. It's like if our you put a second stage on a Redstone rocket. It's not exact, but that's an approximation. With our most recent launch, just a couple of weeks ago, and one that also happened to... Prepare to fast forward. Preparing to fast forward. Fast forwarding, sir. Fast forwarding. If it works, Neutron is going to jump to a high place in my favorite rocket list. Yeah, Redstone. The Redstone rocket is about the same size. That's the closest one I can think of off the top of my head. Or maybe, maybe Scout? Something like that? When does that fully 3D printed rocket have another go? Terran 1. Never flying again, Twisted. Relativity did a SpaceX and decided to work on Terran R, which is a Falcon 9 sized fully reusable rocket endeavor. What is the payload and what is the flight path? It is a synthetic aperture radar satellite, a commercial SAR satellite, so commercial observation satellite. Um, <clears throat> they're launching from the Mahi Peninsula in New Zealand and it's heading south. Uh, they're aiming for a 97 degree inclination insertion 97 degrees sun synchronous which is where most observation satellites are uh, R is supposed to be partially 3d printed it really was hokey yeah considering you know bead welded tanks right like it's pretty damn good 
Polar launch, 97 degrees incline. Technically retrograde, Gaijin. Technically. Yep, they're going to parachute the booter back down. Subcoolers for Booster 9 are firing up. Kilometers from the launch site and awaits confirmation of splashdown by telemetry. Once the captain receives confirmation, the chase is on. Come on, Synergy. The recovery team speeds to the booster's location at sea, typically rendezvousing with it just minutes after splashdown. The, We've using seen... a specially designed marine retrieval apparatus, Electron's first stage is plucked from the ocean Ready? and secured on the vessel for the return trip home to our production complex to undergo testing Truck. and refurbishment for reflight. From launching rockets to marine recovery, or even building and launching a spacecraft to the moon, we have come a long way. If anything you've seen from us excites you, and you're wondering how you can be a part of this, we have around 100 open roles right now across our launch and space systems businesses. So visit the career section of our website and apply today. All we are on. getting close now to the launch handover to Electron at T minus two minutes. Tanking on booster that is nine should Electron's start pretty much right around when the, the rocket count, launches. And the rocket will switch to internal power. The Autonomous Flight Termination System, or AFTS, will also be enabled at the same time. Then under a minute to lift off, the propellant tanks will be at their optimum pressure levels for launch. Ground control in the range control center will confirm that the water deluge system on the pad is ready to be activated for when Electron's engines ignite. The launch director will perform the T minus 10 second countdown and at T minus three seconds, the engines will ignite ahead of the launch pad's hold down mechanisms releasing at T zero. We'll hand you over now to mission control for the remainder of the count and check back in with you shortly after liftoff. All right, let's see what we got. on mission. From now on, there should be no red flags on your critical LCCs. Vcon LD on mission. LD Vcon. Lock the auto sequence and confirm. Confirm locked. And Vcon confirm Stone all expected close. primary flight computer as goes or green. green. Confirmed as goes or green. All operators, we are go for auto sequence start at T minus two minutes. LD is go for launch. Launch director says he's good to go. Mission control or land center, Bellum? I'll let you decide. Avionics batteries have switched to internal power. Ground power disabled. The vehicle is fully on internal power. Okay. The test is green and enabled for flight. Flight termination system is armed and the vehicle is cut off from the grid. The batteries on board the rocket are now powering all systems. No, I didn't, Forge. I don't think about Ars Technica at all. Also complete. System is in recirculation. Okay. Where is this globally? The Mahia Peninsula in New Zealand. Anti-geysering is disabled. The land center is in New Zealand as well. 60 seconds. Stage one and stage two are pressed for flight. High flow engine perch enabled. Okay. They're purging down the engines. 
to make sure that there's nothing in there but propellants when the pumps do turn on. Ninety-seven degrees inclined, Irish. It's going straight south or south southeast or south southwest. Excuse me. T minus twenty seconds and counting. The flight azimuth is probably like one eighty-five, one ninety, on a compass. Ten. Ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Sound suppressor is four, on. Three. Two. Engine ignition. One. And lift off. All right, there we go. We got a liftoff. We like the nightlife is in the air during the day, ironically. Send it. Look at that little thing go. <laughs> On boards. Into the clouds. Electron is up and away Dude, the from audio, that though. Complex One, soaring through the sky and on its way to space for nice. Capella. All is looking nominal with the rocket and its engines as the mission approaches its first notable event, Ooh. Max Q or maximum aerodynamic pressure, the most intense pressure during flight that the rocket will experience. The call that we've cleared that milestone should be coming from mission Thank control TV shortly. Discharges nominal. You could hear you could hear the pad that the microphone that you're hearing is the uh, launch pad purging out systems First reuse of a Rutherford engine. That's right. There is an engine that That was on a previous electron guys that they took off one that that they landed in the ocean Yep Maximum there dynamic pressure that's max Q cleared as electron continues with Capella satellite on its orbital journey The mission is moving along at 2,300 kilometers an hour and is now past 19 kilometers in altitude The next mission milestone will be the shutdown of those nine Rutherford engines on the first stage Just ahead of the second stage separating to fire up its stage own engine And continue that mission that will be called out as Miko or main engine cutoff. AOS Chatham Station. Followed by Chatham. stage separation, <laughs> then stage two ignition. Those call outs from mission control should be happening shortly. So let's listen in. Stage one propulsion holding nominal. Stand by for Miko in roughly 30 seconds. 125 seconds into the flight, everything looks good. A little windy, uh, upper level winds are a little high, but uh, yeah, Electron gets blown around in the up upper level winds. Entered our detect mode. That does happen. Should be coming up on main engine cutoff here in the next 10 seconds. Miko confirmed. Main engine cutoff. Stage separation. Oh, what a shot. Upper stage Separate. ignition confirmed. Oh, that shot is sick. No, that's good, man. Real good. <laughs> that is Miko state That's separation cool. and second stage ignition all confirmed that was awesome. control and by what you saw from Electron's vehicle cameras. We pulled up the video feed from the camera on the first stage as it begins to make its way back to the Earth. Meanwhile, the fairing on the second stage should split and fall away shortly. We should hear that call across the net soon. They had a cutout on the inter interstage camera, but good upper stage camera here. Uh, okay, that paused right when I said Daring that. Jettison succeeded. You saw it there on your screen. Electron's fairing Stage has split apart and fallen away as planned. Capella's Acadia satellite is Stage now exposed to space from atop Electron's kick stage and ready for payload deployment within the hour. HVP battery discharge Electron's is second stage is moving along now at more than 8,400 kilometers an hour and at an altitude of over 130 kilometers. I didn't see any fairing there. Meanwhile, that red booster oh, is the telemetry. on its return yes. trajectory. You can see it up on your screen to the left, but the second stage cruising along on your right. When the stage is separated, the booster carried on in an upward arc from the momentum. Slight loft. But what goes up must come down, and with a bit of redirection from its external thrusters... Dude, look at that shot on the right left. Now, that will position oh! the rocket stage on the right angle to come back through That's Earth nice. And this is that, why we watch this. Coming home. Oh, what a shot. It looks like there's a little bit of a divergence in the red to white line there. 
but four um, minutes into the they're mission, a slight, an they're on a slight loft. Way to That's enough for the After guidance system to compensate. From Pad B at Launch Complex One, right here in New Zealand. The Acadia satellite for Capella Space is sitting comfortably on top of Stage 2 as it moves along at more than 9,900 kilometers an hour. Electron is headed to a 640 kilometer circular Earth orbit today, so we've still got a bit They're further still to, go to reach the apogee at second stage separation around nine minutes post liftoff. Stage liftoff. one has reached apogee. Stage well, one first apogee. Stage coming back to Earth, you might have just heard on the net that stage kilometers. one has reached its apogee, which is That's the highest there, point of its trajectory That's arc. Way up there. That will mean it's starting to descend now, dropping stage in altitude re re as it will speed up with the force of gravity. It will travel this way for a few minutes before its drogue and main parachutes are deployed to help slow it down. Before that, though, as part of the primary mission, we will reach battery hot swap on second the second stage. Second stage is still lofted, That's guys. expected to take place at around six minutes into the mission. See the converging lines on the right? That's, it's not on the, it's not on like perfect dead center nominal trajectory, but it still seems in the track. They seem to be a about two to three kilometers lofted over their We're initial, over their planned trajectory. Battery hot swap on the second stage. Usually, this is an action that you'll see used only on Electron. That is a swap of batteries that are powering our electric pump-fed Rutherford engine on stage, stage two. two. Electron will switch to a fresh new battery pack. We got a nominal and call on GNC there, so the as they fall away. Hot swap in roughly 30 They're seconds. the shiny object you can seconds. see next to the engine. So once those drop away, you'll know the battery hot swap That's has a been huge completed. Converging trajectory. Or diverging trajectory, so they're gonna they're gonna jettison the batteries. Uh, the batteries uh, at this velocity, the batteries eject, right? Copy because it's dead. It's dead mass, system. right? Like an empty fuel tank almost. That little silvery thing on the right there. They're gonna jettison it because that battery's there. There it goes. Bye bye. Uh, because it's hot dead. Successful. And they'll hot swap over to a secondary set of batteries on the upper stage. You heard it there from Mission Control. Those batteries Electron burn up in the atmosphere. They're going fast. Has completed its enough. battery swap and is continuing along nominally. The launch vehicle is exceeding. The reason, the reason why they use batteries is because the the electron has electronic fuel injection. There's an electric motor spinning a fluid impeller to pump to pump uh, propellants into the motor. So, they don't use the propellant for pump actuation they use batteries and an electric motor the rutherford engines we still got a very very divergent trajectory but what i was saying is that once the second stage goes into a terminal guidance or an inertial guidance it should it should um make up for that Second stages are designed to make up for lofted trajectories, so these lines should start to converge sooner rather than later. It's electronic fuel injection. Okay, stage one is now entering the lower parts of the atmosphere. Oh. Uh, <laughs> maybe it hit the water. Um, stage one will drove deployed. Okay, they got a call. That call was great news from Mission drogue. Control. And while it looks like we've lost the video feed from stage one, as we expected, we did get nominal. that confirmation from Mission Control that the stage is a drogue that parachute has been deployed. That is excellent news. Just ahead of the main parachute, which should deploy in the next few seconds. Stand by. We're waiting for a call for main chute deploy. Stage one is upsonic. Stage one is below 1.2 Mach. Stage one main chute deploy. Got a call on main shoot. There's the call we were waiting on. Confirmation from our team in mission control that the booster's main parachute has been deployed. That will mean the first stage has well slowed down its pace and should stage be two floating. Terminal, 25 seconds remaining. That stage should now be floating gently towards the water stage out over the Pacific three, Ocean, yeah. where our recovery teams are in position and waiting patiently for that chance to move. Altitude in. is going down. 
Altitude's going down, it's sig- So just a few seconds away- The altitude is going down, signifying a radial in burn, meaning that the second stage is- is making up for that lofted trajectory, see? Alt's going down. So the stage is actually pointed slightly down towards Earth. To- to make up for that con- the lofted, uh, trajectory. The second stage engine cold and the kick stage cleanly separated. All we have left now to complete the mission is payload nominal deployment for Capella's Acadia satellite. They did the call a nominal orbit, so the second stage compensated. With its payload atop. After that phasing orbit is complete, the Curie engine sure, on the kick stage will light up to correct its, tra its trajectory to a circular orbit before deploying the payload, which should be coming up in the next 45 minutes or so. It, it compensated. The inertial system compensated, Bill. That happens. Yeah, we just don't always see it. continuing to make its way down to the ocean as planned. At sea, our recovery crew... Mariel? Mariel, do we have acquisition of signal? Hello? Before we break through, though, the latest on recovery is that the booster continues to make its way down to the ocean as planned. At sea, our recovery crew are on standby in the recovery zone waiting for that splashdown before they move in to collect the first stage. Once it has water landed, the crew will move in to pull it up and out of the ocean and on board the recovery vessel before LOS they begin the journey station. back to land. We will take a bit of a break now, but we'll come back to you in a few minutes with confirmation of booster splashdown. We'll sure be back shortly. Sure looks that way, Geeson. Stage one recovery vessel has visual on shoot. Okay, recovery vessel visual on shoot. So this one actually didn't go to sun synchronous. Ow, that was my knee. This one actually didn't go to sun synchronous from what this trajectory looks like. It looks like it's going to a high inclined prograde orbit. So 70, 80 degrees inclined pause grade. Loopy's Blue Origin is two years older than SpaceX. about 12 minutes into the mission here, waiting for confirmation of recovery. To all operators, uh, expected AOS for kick stage at approximately T plus 43 minutes, 54 seconds. So we're about 30 minutes out till the reacquisition is signal from Canary Islands, it looks like. Only from the cast from this morning, Funky. Surprised they don't have any ground tracking stations in South America. I don't really see them launch on this trajectory too much, Aqualex, but maybe, maybe I'm just getting trajectories confused. Um, Warhog, SLS didn't go over budget. It was underfunded, consistently. Yeah. Underfunded consistently, believe it or not, through most of the program. The only time it was really overfunded was 
2014 to 2016? Yeah, around there. I mean, that's not really opinion either. If you, NASA Systems Engineering manual here has basically an idealized funding curve through the life cycle of an entire project here. Take a look, man. Find it. Long story short, funding needs to happen on a bell curve. So basically, you need to ramp up funding all the way until a developmental test flight, and then when you test after the test flight, you can ramp down funding as you optimize test flight from there. Um, yeah, here it is. Look. So what this basically says here, I know you're probably looking at that and it doesn't look like a bell curve. What this basically says is pretty much percentage of cost of program as a whole, right? And if you look, the biggest jumps in cost really go from pre-planning over to testing and then through operations from there. This right here is when you get to your first operational flight, and then funding will go down from there. But see the, see the gaps in that bar graph? Funding should generally go up all the way to your first operational flight, depending on what you're doing. SLS never had that. SLS flatlined its funding, flatlined the funding. So pre-phase, preliminary design review, critical design review, manufacturing, all the way to Artemis One the funding stayed flat when it needed to go up and then come back down. I'm telling you, it's perpetually underfunded. And that's per NASA's funding standards, you know? Standing by for waterfall mode on the OLM. What book was that? That's NASA's Systems Engineering Handbook. You wanna know how to run a space program? This is a good book. It's actually free. You can go download this on NASA's website right now. It's free for everybody, which is really cool. You can check the exact page that I'm talking about if you want to fact check me. Go ahead. This talks about how the life cycles of different projects and how funding should be appropriately applied. To say that SLS is overfunded is a, is not right. Where people get where people get that oh, SLS is so overfunded, it's so over budget, it's so expensive compared to everything else. Where people get that from is that they've consistently, Congress has consistently kept the funding increasing, basically, basically, you know, they've kept the funding increasing over time, basically to go with inflation. If you really wanted SLS to happen on a timely schedule, and we're basically at the point where we're moving into operations anyway, so it's, missions will be more timely as we go further and further. Uh, you need, they would have needed to like triple or quadruple the funding. But if you're comparing funding from one fiscal year to the next, it just kind of flatlines but goes up with inflation. Those differences in funding have been reported in the past by certain journalists as overfunding because they don't understand funding programs on a flat line and why it's bad. And then they somehow construe that overfunding and less work getting done as some type of conspiracy that SLS is just a money sink program, which is hilarious to me. SLS, SLS isn't even funded per NASA's own funding rules. It's critically underfunded, uh, I would say. That's why it's taking so long. I mean, like I said, anybody can feel free to, to fact check. You want to go look at, S, at SLS's funding from 2011, or 2014 is really when the big program, the program got off. 2014 to now, perpetually underfunded, big time. Now, don't get me wrong. That's not to say that there isn't some waste in programs. There isn't government accountability office and office investigator generals uh, offices to basically make sure that there's not, there's not waste. But the reality of the situation is, is that there's always going to be waste in a big program like this, no matter what. 
And I would argue that trying to have controls on it while development is going is going to actually make things worse. Seriously. It's going to make things worse. People probably don't want to hear that, but... Basically, if you're trying to develop a vehicle, it's gonna, you're not, you don't know how long that's going to take. You're not sure what the development timeline is. <laughs> it's almost like they wrote a book about being able to deal with that uncertainty. But, you know, this is, this is for an ideal world. It's not an ideal world. So I'd argue that having these constant cost checks and constant, basically, like, credit score hits on NASA is basically making things stagnant. It's slowing things down, not speeding them up. And it's funny because it, the intention of these things are to do the opposite of that. Of opposite, the opposite of what the effect is. I don't want your facts. Give me something subjective that I can argue with you till I'm blue in the face. <laughs> you, you suck. Data is imperfect performance from the reuse engine. Cool. We are cutting into this break before payload to deployment to confirm what we have just heard over the nets, that Electron's booster has splashed down in the ocean as planned. The Electron recovery operations will now move hey, into 12. stage collection from the water. Thanks for the, the reset, crew, buddy. As you can see, they're moving quickly to reach that stage and pull it on up. We'll have this video footage up for as long as we can, and if we're lucky, we might even see it pull up alongside Electron. But until we do, we will turn you back to this animated holding graphic that shows the position of Electron's third stage above us as it makes its way to its mark for payload deployment at around T plus 57 minutes. We'll see you back here then. Warhawks still suing SpaceX and losing as well as not showing any progress, even if they are doing old school stuff, is still not a good look. Yeah, welcome to defense contracting, dude. This happens all the time. Now, Blue has... Blue's tried to muscle their way in before. Yeah, it has happened, but every time they've been shot down. I could file a lawsuit against you right now, Warhawk, and guess what? If it doesn't stick in the courts, it doesn't mean dick. I've just wasted a bunch of time. If that's what you're arguing, then yeah, I mean, yeah, I understand that, but... I, I would think to say that Blue or SL, like SLS is not doing anything, SLS is so slow. Well, that... They don't... NASA doesn't control the purse strings for SLS. Now, with Blue, on the other hand, Blue is basically trying to get their hands in as many pies as possible in the aerospace sector. The idea is that if they have their hands in the pie everywhere for, like, first stages, second stages, payloads, orbital space stations, crew space flight, that, you know, you'll be able to make a better bridge into space. So... The thing is, is that doing all that is going to take a lot of time. It's not like SpaceX where you just build Falcon 1. Okay, Falcon 1 works. Okay, build Falcon 9. Okay, Falcon 9 is amazing. Falcon 9 reuse. Then go to Starship, etc., etc. Blue is literally trying to, to do everything all at once. And when you try to do everything all at once like that, it's going to take time, especially with aerospace. Guys, Blue is into more stuff than you could ever imagine. They're... Don't ask me how I know that. Anything from nuclear propulsion systems, Orbital Reef you've heard about, New Glenn, New Shepard Taurus flights. Blue Origin basically has like an SLS style operational budget. And when all these projects come to fruition, man, people are going to be, the people are going to change their tune really fast. I had me on mute the entire time. I don't know what to tell you, homies. It's the internet, man. People live to argue. Alright. So, like, Boeing with Apollo? Kind of, yeah. Loopy, next time something... Next time something like that happens, just tell them to listen to me. I'll take care of it.
I mean, you know, I'll be honest with you. I can understand where people are coming from. Blue has been around for 23 years, and they've done suborbital flights, which is very good. That's amazing. But I, I would argue that they really didn't get hardcore into what all the stuff that they're trying to do until more more recently, like 2015. But the fact that Blue is basically self-funding their own program that's on par, if not more, than SLS in terms of yearly funding is frankly ridiculous. And doing New Shepard all on top of that. It's like operating Mercury Redstone in the Apollo program at the same time. Last time NASA did something like that, they had a blank check to do it. Drone is up looking at Booter 9. Cool. Here's a pick-me-up for you. The Yankees have lost nine straight for the first time since 1982. You're welcome. Hey, but why do you report this news knowing that I think that's hilarious and I don't feel bad? Why would, why would you tell me this? Not quite a blank check, but 4% of the USGP is pretty significant. Yeah, it, it, it's a little bit of tongue-in-cheek on my part, Mr. Wild. Yeah. But see, can you guys see why uh, there's certain space flight reporters that I don't give breath to anymore? I don't. I don't bother. It's not worth it. There are people out there that are at there there are pundits in the space flight community that are at the peak of the dunning kruger curve it's ridiculous how bad it is now i would say it's ridiculous with how bad it is with certain folks i'd say the vast majority of people that report about space flight usually make honest mistakes like myself i, I don't get everything right all the time sorry i wish i was that good but yeah there, there are certain pundits out there. You guys probably know who I'm referring to if you've been following this stream for some time. I've been just not mentioning them at all. This, In fact, this is the first time we've even thought about those in a long time. Uh, and I did that on purpose. I said probably about a year ago that I wouldn't give them the time of day anymore, and then I decided to actually follow up on that. So... Have you read Promise Denied from NASA? No, I haven't, Green. Because I consider us Twitch friends and I know you enjoy it. Yeah, but you don't need to go swimming in a river of crap just to make me happy, dude. It's all good. But, if I mean, if you want to keep doing it, I, I will take schadenfreude in it, to be honest with you. I don't understand how people can compare SpaceX spending to others when we don't even know how many billions are spent on Falcon 9. It's in the billions, Bill. Easily. For Falcon 9 development, to get Falcon 9 where it is and to get it honed in with Block no 5 and everything up. and all Star... If, I mean, if you want to fund it, if you want to... If you want to pick the funding just like NASA did, you're funding payload and rocket, which means Starlink development gets roped into Falcon 9 development if you want to understand total cost involved to fund it like NASA, right? We're never going to get those numbers. Maybe in retrospect. But, yeah. Hey, Pork! 38 month resub! To be fair enough, talk to people who work on SLS. And man, is it a crap show. Lots of mismanagement and a lack of passion in people working on it. Yeah, that's what happens when you're consistently underfunded, S-Master. You can't acquire the talent that you need to get a program done like that. It's true. Like, I, I, I'm i not... People, people are going to get... Like, if I went on Twitter and I said this, I would get absolutely wrecked. Not that I give two craps what people think on that website, right? But... I could go in there and literally tell straight facts, paraphrase directly from NASA, and people would be like, no, that's wrong. I'm like, All right, have fun with that. In fact, sometimes, like, sometimes I do that, guys. Sometimes I quote people from NASA, like, on stream, and people say, no, that's wrong. And I'm like, all right, yeah, you're probably right. I do it for fun, just to see who's paying attention. Sorry, I play games. I did it on the NSF cast the other day, too. I, uh, yeah. When we, when we were talking about the static fire and stuff, 
There are some explanations that I paraphrase directly from people that work at NASA that are familiar with said subject matter, and there were people in the YouTube chat who were like, no, that's wrong. Judges two for two tonight with five RBIs, solo and grand slam, so at least we're so at least we're swinging the bat. I like Judge. I mean, Judge is a good dude. I, I can't hate him. He's a good dude. I mean, it's a shame. It's a shame that SLS is the way that it is. It's a shame that that project ended up where it is. But, I mean, you're starting to, they're finally starting to gain freaking momentum. But I will say this till I'm blue in the face. SLS is underfunded. It's always been underfunded. It's been underfunded since 2016. That is seven years of perpetual underfunding. Basically, they say, we want you to fly in 2017. And they say, okay, we're going to need probably about $10 billion between 2014 to 2017 to get that done. And basically, Congress is going, oh, 10 billion. All right. Uh, best I can do is like three, maybe two. Yeah, two. Best I can do is two. And then NASA goes back to them and says, well, if, <laughs> if you're going to give me $2 billion to try to get the rocket flying by 2017, the rocket probably won't end up flying until like 2022. You guys, you can go back and look at stuff regarding the course stage. Like, I could have told it like it, it I at the time I didn't have the wherewithal to understand NASA funding but I could have told you that the SLS program was going to get delayed if, if it, like in 2016 2017 all the signs were there if I had the wherewithal like I, I learned a lot about this after that I learned a lot about this because of SLS because instead of going oh SLS is oh SLS is overfunded what a piece of junk oh heard her old shuttle hardware etc cetera, etc cetera. I I really thought I'd probably would be good to do some due diligence and figure out exactly why is that really what's going on or is are people do people just want to blow hard about stuff and yeah there you go yeah exactly green mm -hmm. mission mode did teach that too go not to design by committee <laughs> They made them use old shuttle hardware on SLS. Well, Phantom Racer, you really, you really want me to activate your almonds in this? Want a history lesson while we wait for payload deploy? SLS is designed by committee. Make no mistake. This is what happens when you make engineering decisions and make them law. It has to use this rocket engine. It has to do this. It has to do that. You're going to get a rocket that is designed by committee that's really good at doing nothing. Right? Right? Now, the funny thing to me is, is that everybody, everybody cites that as the reason, oh, Congress mandated it, Congress mandated it, Congress mandated this rocket, it's Congress's fault, it's Congress's fault, it's Congress's fault, all the time. You know, oh, Congress, man, they, they, they shouldn't design rockets, NASA should. Well, the fun, you want to hear a fun fact? The fun fact is that NASA was trying to design their own rockets, and Congress was trying to get them the funding for that. And then somebody decided to pull the rug out from our entire human spaceflight program and get rid of Constellation. And Congress, in an effort to, in an effort to try and save our national space program, they mandated SLS as law because they tried to cancel Constellation. They tried to get rid of the program completely and pawn our entire national space program off to commercial endeavors. Congress said, no, the hell you're going to do that. Congress saved NASA's human spaceflight program with SLS. As bad as SLS's design is, not bad, as, as lacking in our mission architecture as SLS's design is, NASA still has a human spaceflight division that's not entirely beholden to commercial endeavors to go and explore the moon because of Congress. The rocket is designed by committee, and that's bad. I don't think that's a good way to do things. But it's designed by committee because someone tried to pull the rug out from NASA and have them design nothing instead. Just saying. And guys, once again, you want me to you want me to cite specific examples? I can cite specific examples. I can give you timelines, people involved, what they did, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I've done this a thousand times. I read about this stuff for fun. Yeah, Phantom Racer, pretty funny, huh? 
fun fact, the people that are whining about SLS being designed by committee don't, they, they just fail to mention that part. Interesting. It really activates my almonds, man. Who tried to shut it down? The executive branch of the United States. The executive branch decides what NASA's goals are. When the executive branch takes a project that spanned two presidential terms and says we don't want to do it anymore, Congress tells them to go frick themselves. Did Charlie Bowden try to fight back against the cancellation of Constellation? Nope. He's beholden to the executive branch. He, Congress is the one that said, uh, absolutely not. And pulling the rug out from under from Constellation, basically the, the a decision to take the to take NASA's goals and change them because because change them completely. Now I'm not going to sit here and pretend like that didn't screw the status quo. That pissed off a lot of people. But also, it set our space program back about 20 years. Actually, it's more like 10, about 10 years. And guys, th those 10 years, once again, I can cite a specific example. Those 10 years are not my personal opinion. A guy by the name of Neil Armstrong and another guy by the name of Gene Cernan testified to Congress in 2010 or 2011 saying those exact words. This is before any of this happened. Saying that canceling Constellation and retiring the shuttle will set our national space program back by a decade at the very least. Now, the fun fact about this is that if you don't take COVID into account, the years that COVID delayed the SLS program, Artemis 1 is pretty much a decade later. It's almost like the first and last guy that walked on the moon know what they're talking about when it comes to space flight. It's kind of weird, right? Hmm. When you hate being right. Yeah, it, it's so ridiculous, dude, when I'm reading around on the internet, you know, X or Reddit or whatever, if I'm like researching something and going and reading about it, how many people think they know exactly what's going on but have no idea what's going on? It's it's kind of it's kind of alarming, dude. It's kind of part of the reason why I keep doing what I'm doing here, because people don't know this. They don't know this. That's not good. I missed the launch. How was it? Launch was great. We're just waiting for the payload to be deployed. Should be in about ten minutes. Yeah, Artemis two should be stacked soon. Yep, yep. We are in a coast. Mm -hmm. This is a weird plague map. Yeah, I know, right? Are we sure the executive branch should tell NASA what to do? How would you do it, Nova? Have Congress decide what they should do? If Congress decides what NASA does, you get SLS in the first place. No, no. We need to have a national goal. Is that what made commercial orbital transport systems happen? Well... Bill, the funniest part about this whole thing is that Constellation, when it was canceled, they kept certain parts of it. The Orion, Orion being one of them, five segment SRBs being another one, and a little office that had started to get funding for funding the replacement for the space shuttle program when NASA started moving out beyond low Earth orbit in the early 2020s. That little program was called Commercial Orbital Transport Services. And it was part of the Constellation program. COTS-1, the COTS-1 contract saved SpaceX in 2008. Saved them. I.e. there would be no SpaceX. They would have gone bankrupt in 2008. Had part of the Constellation program not kept them afloat with funding for Falcon 9 and ISS resupply missions. Yep. government sucks private sector good yeah that's why there's a gov there's six government flags on the moon and no private ones right now right hmm interesting hmm that really rustles my jimmies that really activates my almonds man i'm tired of being right Funny how SpaceX somehow managed to build Dragon and Falcon with less than one billion. Falcon 9 1.0, an expendable rocket with a non-reusable capsule forge, sure. Okay. But to somehow insinuate that Falcon 9's entire momentum that it's carrying here was done on less than a billion dollars is frankly absurd. 
That really butters my biscuits. Yeah, right. Yeah, exactly, Loopy. That's why it was pretty much the stupidest thing you could do, pulling the rug out on a program that had been in development for two presidential terms. Are you out of your goddamn mind? Why would you do that? So stupid. We'll see how long that trend continues. Well, and that's the last time I checked. It's been 50 years. It'd be nice if organizations that had long-term progress got the leadership that didn't have to worry about the next elect, the next election. <sighs> yeah. India's flag? No, I'm re I was referring to the six Apollo landings, Jimmy. India does have a flag on the moon, though. And I'm super proud of them for it. Do you think that it was the right choice to yeet Boeing out of HLS? I mean, their lander was the closest thing to being made and will ride, would ride under the capsule on Block 1B. It would be called the Boeing launch system, but it will get to the lunar surface. I think Doug Levero at the time, Forge, was trying to go through back channels to get a lunar landing done in 2024, so he did some borderline illegal stuff to do it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, they probably would have gotten it done. People forget SpaceX is a rare company that isn't driven by an increasing share value. Those core principles and goals are a major reason it worked while other ventures failed. Bingo. Where would commercial crew be at if they had just chosen, like, Sierra Space and Boeing? and not Dragon 2. Prop load on Booster 9 is underway. Do you think Astrobotics Peregrine Lander will land successfully or end up in a self-made crater? With the acquisition of Mastin, the chances shouldn't be as low. They might not get it on the first try SLS, but they'll get it on the second. Why is this skipping so badly? If they did that, the lawsuits for the commercial crew program would still be going on to this day. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, good conversation. Hopefully that guy unmuted the stream. <laughs> Who remembers the Steam Eco Rocket? The, what's the name of that company again? I forget their I forgot their name, Sawyer. <laughs> Whoops. Oh yeah, Arca, that's right. Can't see it anymore. Does banning people make it so you can't see the stream anymore, Mutter? I don't even know anymore. Really? Oh, wow. That guy must be pissed. Oh, well. Shouldn't have been a dick in my freaking chat. It's late. What happened? We had a uh, SLS bad person in here. And Yeah, iron, right? Jory hugged the rocket, he's a legend. He hugged the centaur stage, yeah. Stuff like this is why is why when people say space flight isn't political, space knows no borders, I laugh my butt off because the thing tells me they don't know a damn thing. Well, Loopy, honestly, man, space has been pretty much the status, like, between administrations, the space program has pretty much kind of run its course. Um, NASA took a pretty big hit in the early 90s when the Cold War ended, which 
I don't know why you would do that. Why would you cut NASA's funding, a civilian space program, because because of the def Department of Defense Cold War and that's why they abandoned Space Station Freedom and went and did the ISS instead because it's cheaper to work with the Russians. You could save money doing that, but doing it that way. Hmm. How's that working out? Okay. And then, you know, spanning from, like the shuttle program, spanning from administration to administration, right? It's been kind of just keep going with it, keep going with it, keep going with it. It's just one dude, one executive branch tried to buck the trend under the just the guys of, I want to shake things up. Well, yeah, you shook it up. Great, great. You shook it up and you ended up setting our national space program back 10 years because you wanted to, you wanted to shake it up. That's not cool. <laughs> but the crazy thing is, is that since then, it's gone back to being the status quo. You guys ever noticed how SLS has survived three different pres presidential administrations? Same has, same with commercial crew. And it will, it'll, it'll go through, it'll go past four presidential administrations at this point. Funny how that works. Because there was no reason to be in space anymore. Yeah, Aqualex, um, ooh. Yeah, that made me angry. That made me upset. Yep. Was it under President Bush? No, President Bush was the Constellation program. The guy that came after him. Yeah. To be fair, the guy ran on a ticket for change. He did. Oh, you change things. SLS won't get canceled after Artemis Three Nova. The program is, the program is finally getting to the point where the funding is starting to catch up. Because after, remember what I said, after your first operational flight, even though Artemis 1 is a test mission, that is an operational flight, the funding needs go down. And SLS's linear funding is starting to converge with the funding needs. So stuff should start to happen pretty fast, just like it is. Mark your calendars. Join us Thursday, August 24th at 11.45 p.m. for the broadcast of the Crew 7 launch to the space station. Liftoff is set for 3.50. And I'll be here. <clears throat> I hope this isn't too much rule aid. But isn't the cancellation of some programs down the downside of having a new administration every four to eight years? Discovery. Failures. Throttle. The point that I'm trying to make, that's a good question. The point that I'm trying to make is that it wasn't always that way. One guy tried to, one guy basically made it a thing, right? And it hasn't happened since. I mean, Loopy's been saying in chat that NASA is a public works program. NASA is a space program that, uh, a, that's disguised as a public works program. That's a pretty apt analogy. Why would someone run on defunding a public works program? Because I want to change things? It's, it's ridiculous. You screwed, you screwed our national space program. Oops. You know, India landed Chandrayaan-3 of the South Pole this morning. And that's great. Don't get me wrong. That is an unbelievably hard achievement. And I'm super proud of them. If Constellation had kept going, we would have been at the South Pole with probes five, six years ago. Easily. That's what I mean. We're ten years behind. Now we got to play catch-up. Sucks. But I don't mean that in a way to undermine India's achievement. I'm, that's super awesome that they did. And it's super... I, I, I'm actually super pumped that it seems like the vast vast majority of, of Indian folks seem to... Like, they, the country has a national interest in space flight, which really makes me happy. That's really cool to see. It's really, really inspiring stuff. What I'm trying to tell you is that historically it hasn't been some partisan nonsense with NASA. NASA has thrived at the points when it wasn't. You know.
That's awesome, Mutter. Eight million people. Space flight. There's still people interested out there, and that makes me really happy. I agree. Joe, I'm with you. Let's... I can only hope that we, you know, this country makes spaceflight more of a national priority in the future. We need to get back to the, we need to get back to the damn Apollo days, dude. But not exactly like that, you know. Okay, we should be coming up on reacquisition of signal here. I know that this is real labor, the biggest problem is the bean counters. It, I mean, I see what you're saying, yeah. Yep, green, yeah. You guys notice between the last presidential administration and this one, NASA just kept kind of running the course? Because the reality of the situation is that NASA is something that everybody likes. It's not a... Look, man. This is about as hardcore as you're going to hear me get when it comes to this on stream. It's not, a, it's not like the last presidential administration and the current one at, at, like each other. Yeah, But NASA just kept running its course. Funny how that works. Bill Nelson, the current NASA administrator, was on the National Space Flight Advisory Council serving under the last NASA administrator, who served at the behest of the executive branch. Space is not a partisan thing. It never will be, and anybody that tries to frame it like that is ridiculous. What three points would you touch on for a non-space believer, my significant other? Joe, I don't need three. I need one. Your significant other have a smartphone? Yep. Yeah. Miniaturization of electronics is a direct result of spending on digital guidance computers that landed us on the moon microprocessors yeah that you have apollo to thank for that the first digital processor well not the first digital processor but the first ever miniaturized digital processor that was light enough and small enough to fit inside of a spacecraft happened because of the multi-bajillion dollar investment from the apollo program joe does your significant other uh like knowing what the weather forecast is going to be? Yeah, where do you think they get that information? They get it from the NOAA satellites up there, the GOES satellites, weather satellites. Help predict more accurate meteorology, and it's funny because they still get it wrong. Sorry, weather guy. <laughs> GPS, global positioning, satellite navigation, yep. Where do you think that came from? That didn't even come from NASA. That came from defense spending. Yep, yep. The Navy wanted a, wanted a way to be able to track all their ships in real time. Navstar. Yep. They opened it up for civilian use in the early 90s. I could go on, Joe. I mean, are we in the ballpark here? Long story short, spaceflight funding is a very inconsequential amount. It's a drop in the bucket comparatively to what anything else that we're doing. But the endeavors that, and the problems of, say, landing a spacecraft on the moon, force the ideas, force innovation ideas, and make us make us come up with things that basically everybody ends up having a benefit from. It's super freaking important to do that. I tried explaining those, so I'm probably not explaining it well. 
So, Joe, have you been following the Star Raker build? Cryo loading on Booster 9. Yeah. I'm not doing the Star Raker build to, to, like, set up some crazy mission architecture. I'm doing it. I'm doing the Star Raker build to keep, to keep my engineering chops and Kerbal sharp. And look at what we've been able to figure out. We, the Shrubber engine. Wouldn't have made that any other way. Right? Uh, th that Goliath Whiplash fan engine, fair, inside fairing engine fan thingamajigger that can just accelerate something to ridiculous speeds. We wouldn't have made that otherwise. Hybrid tech control surfaces. Wouldn't have made those. Wouldn't have even bothered. Sometimes that, that's what NASA needs to be doing. They need to be doing crazy stuff like that. And in this particular case, it's making a sustainable lunar base. Who knows? If we can find a way to live in symbiosis on the moon without resupply from Earth, that means those technologies find their way here. Because think about it like this. If you can build a base that's self-sufficient on the moon, you can build a base that's self-sufficient anywhere on this map. Anywhere. Shot, shot. You're saying lots of lots of the highest end metal additive machines have been heavily pushed by a lot of commercial space and aero needs. There you go. We should have had an update by now on this mission. I'm not really sure what's going on here. Let's try to speed up. Hello and welcome back to the webcast of our 40th Electron mission. We oh, launched Mach 1, a dedicated launch for Capella Space to low Earth orbit. If you've just joined us, we've had a picture perfect launch so far for C Capella's I was gonna say, that was star a, mission. Seemed like it was and pretty smooth operations for Electron recovery. Electron cleared the pad at Launch Complex 1 at 11.45 a.m. local time and so it cleanly through its first launch milestones. That's Max Q, Miko, state separation and second stage ignition before T plus three minutes. Shortly after that, the rocket completed a successful battery hot swap for its stage two engine before the Rutherford shut down as planned for kick state separation at the mission's target apogee of 640 kilometers above Earth. Parallel to all of those actions, of course, was our secondary mission to bring Electron's first stage back to Earth and collect it from the ocean for our eighth booster recovery mission. With clean separation of the first yeah, stage Jimmy. from the second after Miko, the booster That's completed right, its upward arc before making its way back down toward Earth with a little positioning help from its reaction control system. The first stage sliced through Earth's atmosphere and hit peak speeds of eight times the speed of sound before its drogue and main parachutes deployed to like, safely slow like down that velocity. 5,600 miles an hour, whatever. And our team are <laughs> whatever. In recovery that's mode to pull that's the slow. Out of the water and on it's not. Boat so they can start the desalting process and preserve electron for the journey back to the factory. All these flavors Fantastic and electron chose salty. The team made all the more impressive by the fact that today's mission flew with a reflown engine yeah, I got from you, a previous launch for the very first time. It will be so interesting to see how that engine survived its second launch and second swim in the ocean. And I have no <laughs> doubt that our engineering teams are itching to dig into the data and check it out for themselves when it returns home with the rest of the stage. Lundprod, you're saying I can't send the people who say we should focus more on Earth's problems before sending humans further into space. Sending humans further into space does solve Earth's problems. You don't need to get annoyed by these people. You just say that. And if they're going to get mad at that, well, that's not your, that's not your problem. Truth hurts, man. Hmm. You know, everybody wants us to move to a more sustainable future. Green energy, like solar panels and stuff. Gee, I wonder what advanced solar panel technology over the last 40 years. Hmm. 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 That's a mystery. It's nice to see these smaller space programs Stage public and private being successful. Hey, phone sister. Curie stayed shut down there, 47 month resub. A nominal engine shut down Was there. Was it space travel? The kick stage is now in yeah. a prime position <laughs> to release you know? the Acadia satellite onto its low Earth orbit trajectory. Any moment now. 
What about wind turbines? Uh, we don't talk about wind turbines. That was that. Yeah, that wasn't NASA. And confirmed uh, payload deployment. Okay, we got a confirm from Mission Control there that they have a deployment of the Arcadia One satellite. That was Mission Control on the nets. You might have heard there with the good Arcadia news one, that we right? have that successfully name. deployed Capella's <laughs> Arcadia satellite to its new home. In hey, space. I got it right. Congratulations <laughs> right. to the Capella team and all the best with commissioning your new satellite into service. Eight launches so far this cool year, flying. 40 overall and another booster on its way back to the factory. A huge congratulations to the entire job, Rocket Lab family around the globe. Only 10 away from half a century. Hello, Spain. We're looking forward to bring back on the pad again soon, including more upcoming missions for Becoming Capella Space. If you're looking to launch your career into space, make sure you check out our open roles on our careers page at rocketlabusa.com. And don't forget, you can stay up to date with all things Rocket Lab by following us on social media. We are going to finish up the broadcast now, but let's check out today's liftoff one more time. This is Rocket Lab Mission Control signing off. Yes, let's do that. 10, 9, 8. D please show us seven, the picture. 6, 5, Thank you. 4, 3, Two, one, and lift off. That's nice. We got a picture of one. Yeah, yes. All right. Well, that was the We Love the Nightlife mission coupled in with some space flight ethics conversation. Well, not really ethics, but you get the idea. <laughs> Pasquale, yeah. All right, guys. So, Booster 9, we'll uh, switch back over to the NSF coverage. The good old SAR satellite. Rocket Guy, I've talked with people out in the industry that worked with SAR before. Um, and you know what? I'm just going to chalk up synthetic aperture radar radars to magic. Yep. People that, people that invented SAR are magicians. Discovery. I'm no just going to leave it at that. Yeah, I, ha I, I had synthetic aperture radar explained to me once, and I was like, hmm, yes, yes, very provocative. I understood at least three of those words. Yes, hmm, it's interesting. Yes, provocative. Hey, Maz, 96-month resub. Thanks, man. All right, let's tee over to the NASA Space Flight cast. We should be seeing a spin prime test on Booster 9 here. I'm only there. <laughs> I like your funny words, magic man. Yep. It uses magic over here and some time later over there, and then it compares the two magics together to make one big magic. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, <laughs> precisely. I've worked with it too for mission design. It sucks. I still, uh, yeah, synthetic aperture radar. Yeah, I still, I, I, I know what it does. I can see what it does. It, I get that part. But how it does that, I'm just like, <laughs> okay. okay. This footage is brought to you by part of your Jeep. Brought to you in part by your Jeep. Ah, that must be why the camera shot sucks. Look at the lighting on that shot, S. It's terrible. What's wrong with you? The mission design aspect is so difficult and I hate SAR for it. <laughs> <laughs> it sucks and I hate it. The United Rentals people right now, though, are like, yes, 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 yes. Just keep it right in the frame. Just keep doing that.
I'm convic convinced the atmosphere is sentient and, and has a laugh at the expense of meteorologists. I know many others who believe the same. Yeah, it's like me with Kerbal Weather Guy. Yeah, no, that makes perfect sense. United Rentals has to have a very love-hate relationship with Boca. <laughs> yeah, Shotch, right? Can you imagine, I could just imagine people from SpaceX going going down to the United Rentals place and being like, hmm, are these all the pickup trucks you have? And people, going, people saying, like, how many do you want? And the SpaceX person going, um, all of them. That far away, right? Um, yeah, when do we think there will be a static fire? So, if I recall correctly, we have another road closure set for tomorrow. Um, there are quite a few road closures set. So, so Rocket Guy, hold on. Because you need a platform with incredible stability, like less than 0 0.01 degree pointing accuracy and better than 0 0.005 degrees a second stability. <sighs> oh, man. But also at the same time with something that has massive, flexible, bendy, deployable antenna. Oh, and needs really high power generation as well. Yes, I know. Yeah, I, I got the gist of it, but yeah, it's still like, does it, it's one of those things that just doesn't click in my head. Ingenieur, long before that, my second manager at GE was one of the inventors of computational fluid dynamics. Where did he work when he did it? A Kushnet. The golf ball people. They invented CFD to model the dimples on golf balls. And who used a golf ball on the moon? Alan Shepard. Ah, oh, damn, Ingenieur, that's a good story. <laughs> what the heck's going on there? That's indecent, Booster 9. Shouldn't do that here. Zero. That's very... That looks like the uh, scavenging... Um, oh, yeah. the, methane, the, the methane and lock scavenging yeah, system. Drops from the fire axe. Yeah, because I heard like a, like a small vent and then... Bumblebee. Stop so lubricating the man. Yet, but this might be very There's very thermal chill down on the motors. It's like a, kind of topping off the system and priming it. I mean, for Could some, uh, for Falcon 9 on Pad 39A. I can confirm nor deny the rough validity of that story. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. I can't confirm it, Shotch. I don't know anybody that works down there. Yeah. Or do I? <laughs> yeah, similar behavior where you see water first being uh, yeah, first so being very very slow mm -hmm. and then with high pressure. So this might be like the system. Yeah, basically that's true. Sure there's like no air bubbles hey. and everything in the system. Blue and yeah, Booster so, Nine is saying, "Hey, why are you watching me pee? I'm not a pervert to put a camera in the toilet." Yeah, S Master is first of all, but second of all, does that make the OLM a gigantic toilet seat? Kind of looks like it. kind of looks like the OLM is a big toilet. And, and, uh, it has a bidet now, too. Oh, it's a Japanese toilet. Aha. Nanda kore. Sugoi. Ha, ha, ha. It even looks like a toilet. See, look, there's your bowl right there. And the, the commodities come from the... Is a bit weird. Why does this it's make sense, Blue? In the morning, but looks like they're getting it a little bit earlier in the window, hopefully. But that's our uh, upcoming schedule. Back to you, Adrian. Yeah, no problem. And we are we're just standing by. I'm shutting up for a while. I don't want to like uh, go to super chats or question anymore because we might be intimate or detest here. Uh, it, it's really just uh, waiting for it at this point. And are you saying Booster 9 has diarrhea? Yes, a very explosive case of diarrhea, and it emits partially burned methane gas. All right, okay, I'm really stopping. Uh, yeah. Wow. Okay. Oh, God. I have a bad case of diarrhea. I have a bad case of diarrhea. Because there's a signature vent, but 
Is there a plan to leave all this infrastructure here once Starship is flying? Rebuild that at the Cape? Um, Phoenix, my, my guess is that Boca Chica will be used for research and development, and the Cape will be used for operational missions, at least initially. Let's just change the subject. Thank you for <clears throat> Taco it's, Bell. It's just a time thing to really go through everything and listen to it, but that, that might be a cue. But, uh, yeah, just waiting for the fire, X. Uh, what, what, Alex, the sound we are, you're listening for, what, what does it sound, can you describe it? Boy, it's like a <laughs> fast burst. It's like, I'm, yeah, so I'm, not, I'm not gonna do the sound. The Ultra Boom is <laughs> yeah, pretty close it's, to the it's OLM. Like far, like, like, like a nah, I don't think it's that close. I think that's probably like good, like 30, 40 meters away. I'd say 33.33 meters away. Repeating, of course. And this is a spin prime test. If it was a static fire, yeah, I'm pretty sure that boom would not be there. But, yeah. But, uh, on yeah. The, on the timeline for the first flight of a starship, they call that the bend down of of lines. Okay, sure scavenging. Means, big, big scavenging bend down like there. probably for just, you know, releasing everything and... All right, Art. Firing up Let's static fire this. Leroy! Jenkins! Oh my god, he just went in. Stick to the plan, chums! Yeah. Stick to the so, plan! We are, we are getting close to these top of my the guy. hour times. Thank you. And again, SpaceX sometimes has the tendency to target times around, around these top of I the I don't see why times. not, Cryolox. So, uh, that was always the thing that makes you suspicious. If, if your indicators are pointing too close to top of the hour, it's a... Uh, it might be top of the hour. Yeah, are poop so, jokes the reason why NSF that's, doesn't that's have you on as often? Uh, no. You're in big trouble, Alamin. I eat pieces of crap like you for breakfast. Oh, big vent down from the scavenger. Or that this will be a spin prime, right? Yeah. It's, uh, it's the, I mean, uh, unless uh, for pre, even for the pre-burner test that they no longer do, they would need an overpressure notice. So. Yes. It's, you it's eat poop jokes for breakfast? That would allow this. No! <laughs> the OLM went, by the way, it's back again. Again, that is expected. It sometimes goes off and on. Oh, God. So, NSF uh, prefers we, Chevy to Fords. Here, so prefers Chevys to Fords, Nova? I have it on pretty good authority that NSF prefers Jeeps over Fords or Chevys. <laughs> I have that on pretty good authority. Pun yes. token. Thank, yes, oh, thanks, no. Sawyer, for that pun token. Um... And we are getting close, probably. It's it's really at this point we are just we are just standing by as you all are. Jeeps with the hoods up that are broken. From the engines, <laughs> and the thrusting is no longer moving, so they have Hi, yes. every propelled loading. There's <laughs> How you doing, man? And liquid oxygen inside this booster. I told you I'd make your truck One and me. You thought I wasn't going yes, to, but yeah. I did. One thing to mention here is that we know that it is a Aren't Jeeps Prime as even well worse here. than Chrysler's? At Jeeps owned now, by Chrysler. It is more more confirmed even that it is a spin prime because when we saw the static fire test, they fully load the liquid oxygen tank and they load a bit more of, of methane. They don't they don't fully load the methane, but they do load a little bit more and we actually see some frost on the methane tank. Jeep guys like I am owned by no one and they have stopped that load of liquid it's oxygen. Technically Danish now. Load in general. So yeah, Got that Viking energy. We we know that this is the level that it's gonna be at. So that's a yes then. Yeah, and also to they if no. they would fire multiple engines, for example, in a static fire test, they would counterweight it way more. This is yeah. not a lot. Like this booster is not heavy right now. I mean, it's kind of super heavy, but it's not heavy in the in the sense of uh, like there's basically no load in it. Boo. It's, it's barely liquid oxygen. It's it's barely methane. Um, so. Yeah, they they are not they are not doing anything that will create thrust here. Uh, mm. Otherwise, that would be a lot load on this booster. Top of the hour in a minute. We'll see if that prediction holds holds true. I'm mostly like sure that what be happened really before. True. Yeah, I, I I'm thinking that maybe what we saw before was sort of like the hold point at uh, 40 seconds perhaps, and they're sort of waiting and see. You know, maybe they're waiting actually to hit. The, the top of the of the of the hour. We'll see in forty seconds. Should be. <laughs> yep. It's uh, it's kind of interesting. It's it's, it's just, again it's suspiciously close to the top of the hour. We're probably He's not disappointed heavy. in He's thirty seconds. He's my brother, baby. Yeah, probably. Yeah, we, we will have seen already the, the fire X by now, I think. Yeah. So, it's probably not top of the hour. 
I, mean, um, I hope we don't that. have. Wait, wait, wait. Fiat Chrysler, Jeep, yeah. Are owned by one company. That's worse than Peugeot, Renault, and Citroën. I got bad news for you, Tessa. I'm pretty sure Renault, Infiniti, and Nissan are all. Oh, wait, no, that's all. That's all. No, no, that's all one group. Stellantis. Look up Stellantis. They, they, I think they own Citroen as well. So, we might, we might have a bit Who more does Ford time. own? Ford and Lincoln. This being from Tom. Yeah, do you guys know about Lincoln? You got anybody here own a Lincoln? You don't? Uh, it would be a lot cooler if you did. Yeah, that, that, that stopping, like, the old event will stop and... What did you think of the UAP hearings? It's interesting that they're going to acknowledge that into the congressional record, Suu, but it doesn't really prove anything. Stop and start. Also, all right, all right, all right. This point out. Yeah, that booster is super heavy booster there. She got 33 Raptor engines out back, produced 15 million pounds of thrust, made stainless steel construction, used fully cryogenic propellants with a grid fin nat control system. That's what I like about these SpaceX boosters. I get older, but they stay the same age, you know what I'm saying? The next Starship flight test in a few weeks from now. <laughs> Sorry. So, That's still, probably why I don't go on here. NSF as much. Still also. waiting for it. Still waiting for any progress. I, I agree with the, <laughs> <What>? <laughs> with the general feeling that this might be the whole point. Because this feels very holdish to me. It feels very like an inconsistent pattern. It's not, not yeah, really progressing it's a, anymore. It's a proper nothing nightmare. Nothing is moving. Nothing is changing. That's usually a sign. I mean, jeeps are already going through a countdown. This feels more like a stable you know. situation. <laughs> Time to watch EJ on mute like, like that uh, one guy uh, earlier. I mean, we can see the frost line for liquid oxygen has not been going up. Uh, the methane <laughs> frost line, as expected, has not appeared. That movie just appear. turned thirty. Um, but yeah, it definitely seems like we are in a bit of a hold pattern right now. And again, wait a minute, no Tommy. Can hold a bit. That's Tommy. Wait a minute. Dazed and confused. When does Dazed and Confused take place? Like, what is it? Like seventy three or seventy four is when that movie's supposed to take place, and it came out in the nineties. Nineteen seventy six. And when did it come out? Nineteen ninety three. Oh God. Oh God. Oh no. <laughs> So the time when that movie takes place, when the time it came out, is less time than the time the movie came out to right now. Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. Fuck. Damn it! Where did we go wrong? Alex, did you see it? I did not. I I haven't seen it. That was a tip. What does it say? I couldn't see it. I, I couldn't see it on the on the big. What's this? <clears throat> Alright, ready. <clears throat> Hired assassin tipped five dollars. Speaking of toilets, my insurance didn't cover my colonoscopy. Totally cleaned me out. Crappy coverage, eh? Don't do that again. Thank you for the five dollars, but don't do that again. It's longer. More sustained. This, uh, maybe You're showing your age here, bud. I said nothing about my here. age in that entire conversation, so, T-Man. At some point, you have to release that pressure that is slowly building Pay attention up. next time. And, uh, that might be what has, what just happened here. But, again, I could... Can you please say the distance or... between the ground and the booster? About five stories, Hando. So, about a five-story building, give or take. So, 60... About 60 feet off the ground. So, 18, 19 meters, something like that. Immediately perma ban that person, please. There from the back of the orbital launch mount, as well as some engine uh, venting. Yeah, and we are again. We are just waiting for either them Ew. to have Geek, a that's awful. like the long abort vent, where they depressurize the tank slowly, or to the fire exit. Oh 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 I don't see it. I don't. I did not see that either on any of the cameras. Very interesting. Uh, it's always hard to identify these. Uh, these. What small was that? Vents. Oh, I see. I see. I think one of the vents on the top right. That's. Um. Yes. I don't know, Nick. <laughs> Something. 
something uh, depressed or purged or something or that I, was if I do recall correctly either that or I had some Chipotle earlier today in which case I should just you know any uh, propellant build up in there any uh, fires potentially just, um, so interesting to see those going I wonder how those relate to the countdown itself yeah it's, uh, it's certainly very very weird right now it, it's certainly we are at a point where we would have expected the spin prime at this point i'm just kidding i didn't poop my pants today uh but it has not happened so will texas allow spacex to move some of its operations to the other side of the border they're probably loading i don't think so those perch no. tanks on the on, on the booster maybe Sweet. they're gonna test not today huh what as they do the spin prime it's my bet here. Like maybe they are. Can we get a daily poop joke counter? Sort of technical hold and more like no. holding because they're waiting for those tanks to be. No, <laughs> that's probably not I'm a good idea. That at least that's what's going on here. <laughs> that's probably it's probably not I, a good uh, idea, man. Yeah. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Adrian. I don't want to interrupt. I'm sorry. Go. Oh, I want to listen to these. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Me over here. here. <laughs> I had Chipotle and I took a dump. I've been watching you for so long. You guys have kept me sane through my summer job. So I feel you deserve a small cut of the earnings. Also, hi. That's so kind and such a nice message, and I wanted to hit that. And uh, thank you so so much for that. Really, really. That's hey, you really can make poop jokes in here, Chad. Just make it keep it classy, okay? Um, keep it classy, classy. We only allow the classiest I, I, I of the classy get poop over jokes. The like okay? I, I, this is a hold for sure. I'm 100% yes. sure. I need Chipotle. Yeah, get Chipotle away. Was a hold. But Jimmy, does Chipotle way, does Chipotle way have good integrity? No, if it don't have, if that company don't have integrity, like I'm not interested. Six minutes or so hold at this point, maybe ten minutes uh, maximum at this point. So they still have a bit of margin in the hold if they need to continue. This Keep it clean. Make sure to use three ply. There you go, Macby. Yeah. That's the kind of intellectually it's, stimulating uh, poop joke that we need here. Uh, they're at, at this point probably at the at the like at around the middle of where they would be uh, before. Gotta keep the poop joke they sanitary. At some point have to disrupt. Thank this. you, God. But Thank also you. point out it doesn't. You've never had the same conditions that apply for a launch what? condition. Why? It's been prime condition. They could maybe hold longer or shorter. We just don't what are know. Are you nuts? Um, it's just an educated what are you nuts? guess based on other parameters. Did I just hear intellectually stimulating poop conditions. joke? So, um, yep. Yeah. I mean, at this point, uh, yeah, we, we are just trying Salmonella? to. Salmonella? Salmon? Salmon? And waiting to see if Who's SpaceX eating fish? We'll be able to spin prime this booster. You guys and, are missing out. Uh, Chipotle beef beef bowls is where it's at, dude. We are. Delicious. Yeah. Still standing by. What is your go to but to it, Chipotle? We saw the fire X system okay. shortly starting. Like, Geek? We, we saw it briefly, but I. I have the most vanilla Chipotle order, and I'm not ashamed of it, all right? I'm not ashamed of it. I don't care. People are going to give me crap for this. My go-to, beef bowl, extra steak, white rice, pinto, extra grated cheese, all right? That's what I do. It is the most vanilla thing ever. I get it. I don't care. It's, it's delicious. I eat it. Every time, and I get a food coma from it every time I do. I don't care. Judge me. It doesn't have any crap on it. I don't, that's fine. It's okay. I will accept your judgment and then promptly ignore it while I'm enjoying my burrito bowl. It's not easy. Sometimes it's really hard to, to understand what they are doing here. Looks like and, uh, again, they have, still have a lot of do time it! in the window. They, do it! The window started at 3 p.m. local. Yes, you can! And it's going all the way th to to 3 a.m. local. So, not to scare any commentators here, but just in theory, even if they abort <laughs> here, they could perform another attempt to a spin prime. Elon, could, I mean, yesterday, have, what, you said tomorrow. Their, just their road do it! Hopefully they don't just go do anywhere it! near the end of that, but... Yeah. I mean, that is a... I, I'm not. I'm not going to scare anybody, but that's that's a legit possibility, and that would be really proper tank watching because we had nine hours cryo and tank watching streams before. So, we'll see how this develops and the all invent going strong again. Back Still in the no good signs old days. of the fire X. Oh yeah, 
I mean, I wasn't around. I was just watching. But yeah. <laughs> it's uh. We can see the burritos engine's are still good. puffing Doing that a bit. exact same thing, geek, and a burrito is okay as well. And everything looks primed. Everything like if you if you show me a picture of this, I would be like, yeah, this looks like a pet that is about to. Can perform you make yourself the size of the fence? And. Uh... But it's not. And uh, up on the on the very very top of the screen right there at the bottom of the OLM ring. You can see what I believe is the uh, engine chill vent line, which is pretty frosty. I think that is a uh, that's typical, right, Adrian? Yeah, absolutely. This is uh, this is basically the way to to make sure that these are not ejected around the engines. This is kind of like a recapture mechanism, yeah. so they are not have have a boil. It's it's part of this whole system that makes sure that there's no gases around the engines when big. they when they do something. And just to point out again, a spin prime Pretty is big. not trivial. Um, we oh, have yeah. seen in the I'm past really far away. You can't that really spin hear primes me. produced anomalies. I'm far away. With Booster 7, we saw that. I... Where a spin prime produced the anomaly where they had an explosion below the pad. So. Oh. Huh. Well, Another. I think I heard the vent. Oh, oh there we go. Oh, yeah. shh. Oh. Uh, oh, there no, we go. No, no, back. There we go. Okay, seriously, serious note. There's the spin prime. I'm not sure if I'm. I'm okay. I now I'm. I now I'm understandable. I'm okay. That was a spin prime test of booster nine. I mean, we can pretty much say, of course, we don't have any engines count, or if this was successful from just this, but we can confirm that we just saw a spin prime test of booster nine. Absolutely, any... it looked like a lot of engines. Yeah, that really I was cool. about to, like it looked to me like every area was certainly affected. So this was certainly a high engine number spin prime. It's just a question, like, my, my major question is basically, was this the outer ring or all engines? Because I could, see, well. yeah, I, I could see a situation I where they just want to test out. the Raptor QD system and they just uh, do the outer engines, or I could see a situation where they do all engines. It's problem is, it's hard to tell, right? Because either you have a empty room or you have like the engines firing in the middle but either way it looks the same okay. kind of from the outside right. yeah it's difficult uh, with super heavy compared uh, to something like starship because with super heavy one engine not spin now. priming or one engine not static firing yeah. is not that big of a difference when you have 32 other engines but with starship we can kind of get a rough count because hey. you know one engine versus six engines is a so, very very major difference um so yeah with yeah. Here, it looked like See, At least half of the engines good fired, job. maybe all 33, maybe just the outer 20. We really don't know. Yeah. I feel relatively safe to confirm it. It's probably at least the outer 20, if not all. I, I think that's... Yeah, there we go. Mom. There press event. Yeah. Good sign. Bop. Mm. Bop. They also That's, seem uh... to be purging from the from the ten, from the vents on the engine section as well. Bop. You can yep. see some of that venting as well. What? Ongoing. I can't hear you. Yes. But uh, overall, I feel good about this test. Yeah, that looked like a oh. solid test. Yeah, it's a uh, quite quite work Bop. quite well. So let's hope uh, let's hope this is this is an ongoing theme and this clears the way for potential static fire, which then would clear the way for a potential flight. Also, um, I just saw on the back channel an Arvex stubby being linked, and I am very mad about this. I I just wanted to 
I, I just want to point that out. That it annoys me a lot. So I will not thank you, Max. That shouldn't exist. Um, that ugh. I need I need yeah. to take like a cold shower after seeing that. Yeah, don't. Um. Anyway, so with this no! uh, being done, no! what is next no, for this Gusta! for today? How, how, what is what is happening now, Alex? What, what's happening now? Uh, yeah, so right now they're going to detank the booster and basically no. hopefully call it a day. Maybe they, they test something else. Uh, we saw on the last Spin Prime they tested more stuff afterwards. Like they came back again a few hours later and they do they did um, more testing. In, in that case, they did tests of the Birch vents. Uh, they did a lot of, a lot of uh, tests of that. They loaded them as well. Um, yeah, and right now we see those vents coming up, so I believe they probably have loaded those as well. And the the thing that probably all right, guys, they're they're vented down. They're vented down. That's uh that's the end of the test. That's a good spin prime. That was fun, um, fellas. I wanted to do after hours, but I you know what? I always get a little weird when I'm really, really tired and haven't slept in a long time. Do you think, do you think right now is one of those times? Nah? Have you tried sleeping? Oh God. I know it's bad. Tess is actually making sense. Oh, jeez. Go to sleep space, amigo. Gracias, compadre. Gracias. Eh, eh, qui quiero comida. Pe pero quiero comida. Before sleeping. Tengo hambre. I've heard about tennis different personalities, but I'm a fan. All right, cool, cool. It's just methane exposure. Blame it on the poop jokes. All right, yep, yep. So, fellas, I think we'll start off by playing Satisfactory tomorrow. We'll uh, check out the new Update 8 update. What am I having for dinner? No sé. Uh, Chipotle. Chipotle. That's not a bad idea. Uh, yeah. Does he have a date with update? Yep. Chipotle, la comida? No, no, no. I We got it 95% of the way to orbit repairing. Anyway. No, I'll probably, probably cook something. Pollo? Pollo? Hey. Pollo con vegetables? It's okay. All right. That was a sentence. Anyway, room's always gone, huh? Let's see. Let's go raid my buddy Taradri. We haven't raided we haven't raided Terra in a really long time. He's playing Satisfactory, and I want to fall asleep watching Satisfactory. So, let's go see what Terra's up to. Guys, thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed the coverage there. Uh, he's yeah, he's uh, doing tier five, tier six, from what I can tell. So let's go raid let's go raid Terra. We haven't raided him in a little while. I want to see his chat spammed with panels. Heck, dudes, you don't even need to freaking stay. You go in there, spam a bunch of panels, say hi. He's not weird. Not like too weird. Just maybe a smidge. Go give him a raid, and I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Uh at noontime. Noontime. Uh yeah. We'll start off with satisfactory and then I don't know. Who knows what? Who knows what'll happen? Maybe summer car for after hours. 
maybe you should try on this summer car for size. <laughs> Not everything in that poop truck reacts well to bullets. Anyway. <clears throat> Not like EJ weird? No, no. It's Roger's actually pretty damn normal. Yeah, compared to me. I'm just... Sometimes I just go, you know, Looney Tunes, like right now. <laughs> Alright, anyway. Yeah, you weren't expecting a lethal weapon quote today, were you? Yeah. Alright, go raid to Roger, guys. Go go show him, some, show him some love over there. And uh, I'll talk to you guys tomorrow at noontime. Thank you very much for watching. Have a good night, okay?